Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And do you hear that noise? That is the sound of November 1st. Christmas is coming. 2020 is gonna get just a little bit better. So today we're gonna do the first Christmas video of the season. I'm so excited. I've been planning since August, so it's about time. I can't wait to share this with you today. Today we are creating some DIY decor pieces. They're very simple, easy to make, and quite minimal, so they'll fit with almost any Christmas theme. And before we jump into today's video, I want to say a massive thank you to today's sponsor who helps support this channel, which is ShopTagger, the perfect app or extension on your browser to help you do your Christmas shopping at the absolute best price. So let me tell you a little bit more before we jump in. ShopTagger is an extension that acts as your virtual online shopping assistant that's perfect for finding the best deals on items you love this upcoming Black Friday and Cyber Monday. There'll be loads of sales coming up at this point and lots of money to be saved. I'm personally using it to track a few rugs that I have my eye on for my guest bedroom. Simply click the button to add the item to your ShopTagger account. You can add it to personalized lists really easily to keep track of it and then ShopTagger will send you a mobile or email notification to let you know when that item drops in price or comes back into stock. Recently they've launched a feature on their desktop version that will scan the web to find you coupons to try at the checkout to make saving money so much easier. And you can also get some cash back from your purchases as well, so check them out down below. Thank you again to ShopTagger for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video and without further ado, let's jump into these Christmas DIYs. This first DIY is so simple and easy to make. All it takes is a light strand, some cookie cutters and some other bits and bobs that you'd like to add. We're making a cookie cutter light garland. For this project you will need an LED battery operated light string like this. You'll also need some cookie cutters. You'll need a way to attach these. I'm using these Christmas decoration hooks, but you could use paper clips. And you'll also want some little decorations to add onto all of the other strands that you're not adding cookie cutters to. So I started by counting all of my lights. I think I had 40, and I wanted to make sure that all of the cookie cutters were evenly distributed through the lights. So I took them apart. This little set was actually, I think about £1.50 from the range, so I got two of those. And as you can see here, I'm stringing the lights through the cookie cutters, and then I'm kind of tying a little knot by wrapping the light through again and pulling the strand all the way through to make sure that the cookie cutter is gonna stay in place. And for a little bit of extra stability, I'm using the Christmas decoration hooks to tie around the cookie cutter and the lights to make sure that they're staying in place. My light strand had a few different strands, so I kind of tucked the hook into the lights and twisted it round a few times. And I used some jewelry pliers to tighten it up. You don't have to do this, this is optional but I found that it definitely did help getting a secure fit. With all of my cookie cutters attached, I started adding other little decorations like these mirror stars. I believe I bought these from Wish a long time ago, and I've been looking for an excuse to use them ever since, so as you can see, I'm just attaching them to the light strand with some hot glue. I also decided that it would be a good idea to completely destroy my filming setup and rip apart all of these little bits of garland <laughs> and attach those as well, also using hot glue because they're plastic. For a few of them I added these little jingly bells, they were like present toppers from Sainsbury's a few years back, and I just attached them to the light cable just to give it a little bit of interest. On a few of the lights, I also added some ribbon. This is my favorite Christmas ribbon. I use it every year. And I just tied it into a bow and cut the ends at an angle and made sure it was on tightly and just that added a little bit of color as well. And with that being done, this is how it turned out. See if you can spot me in the mirrors. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That DIY was so easy. Now let's move on to a DIY that you can put on your wall. You can make these as big or small as you like. I'm gonna show you how to make a macrame cord wreath. 
For this project you'll need some embroidery hoops, either wooden ones or metal ones, I'm using a variety of different sizes here. You'll also want some macrame cord, but you could use twine or wool or whatever you have lying around. The first one I'm going to show you is a spiral knot, it is the easiest knot I learned this years ago when I was making friendship bracelets as a child. Just start at the top of your hoop, tie a knot to make sure it's nice and secure and then you can start wrapping. When you're doing this project you want to make sure that you've got lots of extra string at the end because you might run out. It does get a little annoying having all of the extra string but trust me you will need it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to start wrapping knots around the hoop, passing it over the top of the hoop and then pulling it through that loop. This is just a forward hitch knot and it creates that kind of spiral shape as you keep going. So as you can see here pass it over the top and pull it through the loop Pull it nice and tight and keep going all the way round. I spent that evening finishing this up, it probably took about 20 to 30 minutes and I came back the next day to show you the final clips of me pulling the last few knots to give you a better idea of what it's going to look like when you're closer to the end. And as I'd made it towards the end, I decided to use a tiny bit of hot glue just to secure it in place right at the tail of it. You can leave the wreath plain or you can add some decorations. I added a few wooden stars with some hot glue and this is how it turned out. The next one I'm going to show you is a little bit more fiddly but this is a double spiral knot and it kind of looks like a strand of DNA. So you're going to take a piece of string and fold it in half, this string needs to be very very long. Once you get to the middle hold on to this loop, this is the midpoint and pull it through your embroidery hoop placing one side of the string on one side of the hoop and the other on the other. Tie a knot so it's nice and secure and then you can start knotting. With the right hand string I'm pulling that over the top of the hoop and creating a loop. I'm doing the same with the left but going underneath and creating a loop on that side. With the extra string I pull it through the loops on either side so the left one goes under and up and the right one goes over and down and then I pull it really tightly. I'm very sorry if you can't see what I'm doing very well because I kept moving the hoop. It's also quite difficult to explain so hopefully if I do it again I'll be able to show you how to do it but uh, this is the first knot so let's do that again so the right one comes over in a loop and the left one goes under creating a loop and then you pull the strings through on either side you want to make sure that the loops you create on either side are the same every single knot so if you start with the right one going over the top it's got to go over the top for every single knot that you make for the whole loop Pull it really tight and you'll notice this one also starts creating a spiral as it goes down. Here's a little sped up version but this one, this one's a little bit more complicated than the last one and it takes a lot longer. It's much easier if you're sat down in a chair and you can put the hoop between your knees but um, it's not as easy to show it on camera. <laughs> as you can see this is what it looked like the next day and I've just got to finish up doing the last few knots. I did become a little bit quicker at this so if you're struggling at the beginning don't worry it does get easier. I'm not making it look easy here, look at that, that is not making it look easy at all but um, it, it wasn't too hard in the long run. With that finished I also glued on a few of the wooden stars to this one too just to add a little bit of an extra touch and this is how they both turned out. That DIY looks like it would be very complicated, but it's actually very, very simple to make. Let's go on to the next one, which is this very simple beaded garland. I think it looks perfect on a mantelpiece or strung inside your Christmas tree. Let me show you how I made it. You'll really only need two things for this DIY, a bunch of beads, wooden beads are great, and I've got them in a few different sizes, and some twine. That's it. Maybe some scissors, I mean those would help, but uh, take a length of twine as long as you want to make your garland and then you can start adding the beads. To make sure they stayed in place I added one bead on the end of the piece of string and tied my knot around that bead to make sure that all of the rest of them weren't going to go anywhere. I used a big plastic needle to help me thread the beads onto the string and this made it so so much easier to get them all on without any problems. 
I added the beads all in a pattern that I determined before I'd started just to make sure I had enough of each of the sizes. I think it went something like two small beads, one medium bead, three small beads, one large bead. They're ever so slightly different in colour as well which I think looks really nice and I picked these packets of beads up at the range for a pound each. I think I used about four packets. This is how it's turning out so I just kept doing this and within about 10 to 15 minutes I'd finished the entire garland. I found that this was actually a very relaxing craft project to do because it wasn't very fiddly and you know what I really love the result it looks like something you could buy in a store and it was so simple and easy to make it was quite inexpensive too at four pounds for the beads and then just a piece of string. I didn't realise it but I did make two garlands in today's video, I hope you don't mind but I enjoyed both of them and the beaded one is a look that I think will stick around for a little while longer. Last of all we have one more DIY project, it's very simple, it's this tassel tree. You know I love a good tassel, especially at Christmas time or throw in a pom pom even. <laughs> Let me show you how I made it. For this project you'll need either a wooden tray or a photo frame or something that's flat like this and some wool in whatever colour you want to use. I also used this little silver star also from Wish, same one as I was using earlier and all I did was make a bunch of tassels. You've seen me do this a few times but for this I wanted to make sure that I was wrapping the tassels to the same size so I wrapped it around my hand 12 times exactly. I then took that extra piece of string, threaded it through my hands and tied a knot at the top to make sure that the wool wasn't going to go anywhere. And then I took another piece to wrap about a third of the way down to create the bunch of the tassel at the top. Once that was done, I used my scissors, I snipped all of those loops at the end and gave it a bit of a haircut. Once again, I know you've seen me do this quite a few times, it's very simple, but we love a good tassel over here on this channel. Taking the board, I started at the top and I actually glued on that star because that's going to become the star at the top of the tree. Once that was in place I was able to then glue all the tassels down in an ascending pattern. I ended up with six. I did want to do ten for an extra row but I just felt like it was going to look very cramped. Instead I ended up cutting this small piece of mirrored silver cardboard to match the star as a little tree skirt or a pot or something like that. And there you have it, a little tassel tree. And with that, that is everything for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it got you into the festive spirit. I am very excited for the next few months. Let me tell you, I think we could all do with a little bit of Christmas cheer this year. So stay tuned because on this channel, I'm gonna be bringing you Christmas videos every single week. Sometimes I might even do two in a week. Who knows? So keep watching, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more Christmassy bits on my story and on my grid. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Happy decorating and DIYing and I'll see you next time. Bye.